Hello, folks. This is uh, Kwame Ajamu, and I'm giving you a look at my new African hoodoo altar. See, I had a green candle on the side, a white candle. Maybe it's probably switched, I think. I don't know. Yeah. This is supposed to be on the right side. White candle. And the tricking candles will be on the left side. You know, I got this Indian statue from a hoodoo shop here in Cleveland a long time ago. I just bought it off the people. Now, I say I have made him Osceola of the black of black uh, Seminole Indian fame. But I, I think that's originally, I think that's maybe Blackhawk or somebody like that. I don't know. But I'll tell you a story about the statue. I can see auras around things that I told you millions of times before. My um, Facebook and YouTube friends, I've told you this, that I could do that million, a million times at least by now. But anyway, when I first got this statue, I would put it up against the wall. It uh, it had a very faint or uh, a very faint like uh, you know that little energy oracle that 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 normally comes from inanimate objects. You know everything throws off some kind of field. I'm just waking up it's eight o'clock some in the morning. And then after I got through giving this thing praise and stuff, all of a sudden that field got a little bigger. It was noticeable like. Really noticeable to me. Uh, that means I'm putting power in this because see, I put things like tobacco, pipe tobacco in there. I'll show you what I have in here. Pipe tobacco. Bullets. I got other stuff in there. I don't feel like digging right now. Oh yeah, a stun gun. I sell stun guns sometimes. A stun gun. See here. A stun gun. So he has other items. I have to go to my other house like a machete and stuff like that. But this is my hoodoo altar. See? As you can see right here, I used to have Yoruba warriors. They got away from me over the year. I mean, seriously. I have a very autistic son. And you know what, you know what that means. Bye-bye. Warriors, but over the years they seem to have stuck with me. I always could find them. No matter he threw them on a the roof somewhere. Years later, I found it. But when I went with my own thing, which is New African Hoodoo, that means catapulting the ancestors of Black people in America. And as uh, like John Henry is definitely an Orisha or a spirit. As a matter of fact, I, I disagree with that term for Orisha's gods. It don't really mean that. It just means selected heads, which means that uh, personalities or spirits that were selected uh, to have power past the grave. They were ancestors and then probably catapulted to something a little bit more powerful. Egungu, maybe. maybe. Maybe more powerful than that. Selected heads. But they carried in them the germ or seed <clears throat> of um, a higher archetypal um, consciousness. Like the consciousness we call Ogun was actually, in the, in the Yoruba, was actually a, 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 a Prince Ogun. He was actually a Prince Ogun. 
who was uh, said to be part of a, a certain uh, curve of ascension in West Africa around that time. Which I think was what the six, late fit was fifteen sixteen hundreds or something. He actually was a person, but that old but that old goon was. Uh, see, we all are seeded by certain consciousness that pervades the universe. We are aligned from that one consciousness that pervades everything, and that one consciousness uh, it it it, it multiply. Like okay, let's look at the the story of the. Uh, Zep Tepi, which is the Egyptian uh, means beginnings. Um, one spirit basically comes down, and, and, and then from it comes the nine, the nine, the nine, which I believe is the basis of Gurdjieff's Enneagram, Enneagram, but we'll get on that later or another time. The nine. And I think from these nine spirits came a bunch of others, or better from uh, let's look at uh, like Atum, the so-called god or, sp or spirit in ancient Egyptian belief. <laughs> from this one thing broke off many others, other gods. So all these original gods were the original consciousness uh, or archetypes of. Um, of the like, uh, like you know, Ogun is supposed to be the god of iron, and Shango is uh, damn, I don't forget all this shit. I don't know. Shango is like the masculinity, um, manhood. Two the two X gods, you know, the two double X god. Did Oya the god of the ocean, the sea? Uh, salt water, or uh, salt, fresh, I don't know, I forgot a lot of Europe stuff. Yemoja is, um, the ocean, the top of the ocean. She became that, but she, she originally was the, the spirit of the Ogun River in, um, Yoruba land. But African American, but, but, uh, a lot of African Americans, like Brazilians or such, said that. <sighs> Gabriel Ja helped them cross the river and helped the slaves cross the river, uh, the ocean. I'm sorry, the Atlantic Ocean. So then she became mother of a spirit of the top of the ocean, Olakun, who's the actual prince, who was crippled from the waist down, a spirit of the bottom of the, or something like that, you know. But these people uh manifested uh, um certain archetypes certain consciousness that pervades the universe and them also and and also pervades animals and rocks and um plants and all kind of things and these people happen to be a correspondence to that specific archetype and it manifested in them to such a degree that they became that on earth to their particular tribe or nation with their own vibration, their own separate vibration with it. In other words, when you see Shango come, the Yoruba king Shango, lightning with thunder, the thunder, then what you're seeing Lightning, lightning and thunder is that person's particular vibration within that archetype so that when he comes his old archetype comes with him plus his own vibration so now that I cut that short now that I got that I, I hope I explain that even though my mind is hazy right now I just woke up but I hope I explain that satisfactorily the same now with us African Americans or new Africans, whatever you want to call us. We've been here in the new world and our ancestors or our selected heads are archetypes with their own vibration. Like for instance, this Indian figure. I'm, uh, to, I've, always, I've, I've always reverenced him as Chief Osceola uh, 
of the Creek Seminole Indians who for New African hoodoo he is our God he is our spirit he is one of our main spirits that we go to I, I've done this before Silver, you know Bass Reeves first uh, US Deputy Marshal uh, and, and was it was Oklahoma Indian Territory Queen Nzinga although she was a piece of work but she rose up to try and halt some of the enslaving of Africans while over on the continent of Africa of course Marcus Mosiah Garvey um, is one of our is our fathers um, Malcolm uh, Omowali X Queen Mother Harriet Tubman or Mother Harriet Tubman we don't say Queen in New African Hoodoo because normally Queens were bitches and terrible people Kings and Queens and all its royalty were always horrible people I don't care what I don't care what country what continent what culture the Kings and Queens are haughty assholes I'm just gonna tell you they're haughty assholes so I know a lot of people in the black movement say queen, my queen, but I don't say that shit. It's really ridiculous and shows that we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. You know, we're just picking up shit. And we don't even study. And even if we do study, a lot of us do study, but we just don't, we don't have no, no subtleties in our stuff. We don't, I don't know how the hell to say this. We don't, uh... We don't really see and use good judgment. You know, we just want to be kings and queens. I don't want to be a fucking king and a queen. I don't want to be that. King king and a queen is an asshole. An asshole. If anything, call me Brother Kwame. That's what I am, your brother. You know? If you're a young cat, you can call me Uncle Kwame. No, nah, no, nah, fuck that uncle shit. Just call me Mr. Kwame. Okay. We're going to do this ritual. See here, I'll play the black beans. I just wanted to show you this. If, I, if anybody knows if this is actually a black hawk, let me know. Because, you know, if I've been giving a reverence to black hawk, that's okay too. But I've had him for, oh, three or four years now. And he's really powerful. So, so. But I mean it to be Osceola. Chief Osceola, um, a Creek Seminole, I'm sorry, the Creek Indians, uh, Seminole Creek, whatever. But if it is Black Hawk, I'll just get you know a poster of Osceola, or either I'll, I'll order uh, some of that, um, some of that uh, actual plant. That I see all the used, and that he got his name from, and that'll be his representation. All right, now we get ready to give the ceremony for the ceremony. I gotta cut out the lights. Okay. I gotta cut out the lights. Ah. You said I got my green candle. I know you can't see anything. But that's okay. What the hell? Oh, it's like not even showing too much anymore. Okay. But we're still going to do this. It's an ancestor. You didn't see my stick here, so let me get this. I give homage. Oh shit, I forgot something. I haven't done this ritual. I haven't done this in a while. I forgot something. Okay, hold on. I'm going to have to go downstairs. I'll be back. Okay. I'm back now. You know what? I normally turn the lights out and do myself. What the hell? For the sake of. Illustration. I'm going to keep the light on so that I can show you people what exactly I'm doing here. 
Okay. Here's my little shrine I got up. Not exactly what most people call a hoodoo shrine, but the pillars, you know, on the hoodoo shrine, shrine or altar. The candles normally represent Jacqueline and Boaz, which are the pillars of the Jerusalem Temple. So, here's water. Let me tell you this. A lot of people say that it has to be a pyramid type design to be a hoodoo altar. Well, or a step, you know, type pyramid design. Well, I'll tell you, as long as you got one candle or one set and one on the other, it's a hoodoo altar. Reason being, because it's like the pillars in the Temple of Jerusalem, which is trying, which itself was uh, mimicking um, the temples of, uh, of the Egyptian temples. Because to be honest, those the Hebrews got all their stuff out of either, either Egypt or Babylon or Mesopotamia, but mostly Kemet or Egypt. So as long as you have one candle on one side and one candle on the other for the temple of Jachin, 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 and Boaz, you have a hoodoo altar. Don't let nobody tell you anything different. Okay. Now let's get with it. It's my ancestor's stick. It's really big, I know. But I, I, I choose to have a big one. That's so... It called to me out of nature, so this this that's what I picked. That's how hoodoo really goes. It's a lot about it's less on um You see that? The fan turned itself on. See that? Yeah boy. That mean the answers are here. They're here. I didn't do that. Don't even wanna shut off. Okay, thank you, ancestors, for letting me know you're here. That means I'm, I'm doing, I'm teaching right and telling right. Okay, so now here we go. Okay, I'm a you. I use a lot. Like I was a Yoruba for a long time, so I use a lot of you know their expressions. Mixed in with, you know, like Christian expressions because, you know, a lot of Christians were hoodoo or whatever. But we'll start with this. I give homage. Omojuba. To the heavenly host. Omojuba uh, to uh, the angels. Omojuba to the thrones. More Juba to the seraphim, more Juba, more Juba to the cherubim, and more Juba to the Arisha, more Juba to the Enkisi, more Juba to the many hosts of heaven. Amen. I say. I give homage to the new African hoodoo. I give homage. To the High Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, I say. I give homage to the Young Black Prince Malcolm Omowale X, I say. I give homage to Mother Harriet Tubman. To the Honorable, High, Loving, but Firm Mother Harriet Tubman. Amen, I say. I give homage. To Mother Otley Moore, who was Marcus Garvey's right hand woman, meaning, like, you know, not in a, rela in a sexual way or whatever, but not that I know of, but just as far as being his number one, one of his number one supporters. I give homage to our, our Mother Otley Moore, who lived a long time, 
who might had just missed the opportunity of meeting like by minutes or, or by a day. I give homage to her. My shame. I give homage to Mother Fan Lou Hamer. Thank you, great, graceful Mother Fan Lou Hamer, who gave up her health for us, the New African people. I don't believe she had any children, so we are her children. We are her children. She was non compromising. And some niggas in prison beat her up while she was in jail. They were told to by the local white authorities in Mississippi or wherever. And I believe that brought about a, a later, of course it was much later, but I believe it, it was a call, one of the causes of her early demise from this plane. So we give homage to her, Ashe. I give homage to Osceola or the creek with black and Seminole Indians, Ashe. I give homage to Black Creek Indian Chief John Horse, Ashe. Go for John, as he's called. I give homage to Indian Creek Billy Bowlegs, Ashe. And if this is Black Hawk, even if it isn't Black Hawk, I give homage to Black Hawk, Ashe. I give homage to Zay Palentra, a spirit that came and actually visited me once. And, uh, I'm not going to get into that story, I shame. I give homage to all named and unnamed New African hoodoo. This is a a, a hoodoo. Uh, this is a real hoodoo ceremony to know my ancestors. This is the New African hoodoo ceremony will come later. I'm just giving homage to all the different spirits, I say. I give homage, not to them my ancestors, to their God. God Almighty, to their God Almighty. Known as Yahweh. Known as El, by the different names. I give homage to their God. In the Greek... Jesus Christos. Let's see. In the English, Jesus Christ. I give homage to the angels. I forgot all a lot of structure of the angels. Thrones. Say, uh, what is it? Thrones. Uh, I forgot a lot of stuff. Powers. Thrones, principalities, seraphim, cherubim, cherubim, uh, archangels, angels, uh, spirit guides, all of that. I say, and they're here with me. I give homage. Let's see if I can think of the first one. To my great, 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 I think, grandfather, Moses Jones, I say. By the way, I'm a black dude, but he was from England, actually. So. But he was a Welshman. I forgot what part. My father knows. I give homage to, and that was my first progenitor uh, ma uh, ma on my ma male line. I didn't know that because I'm a very dark uh, African American person. I give homage to, well, I'm not very dark, but I'm dark, which I wish I was very dark. I always wanted to be. But I see now why I can only get to be me and brown. I give homage. To my great, 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 
grandmother, Mary Jane Jones, or Mary, I forgot, Mary Jane, I think. Mary Jane Jones, I say, was a black woman. She was a black woman married to a white guy. I give homage to John Harold Jones. My great great grandfather. Oh, and his wife, who was a white woman, Anna Marty Jones from Switzerland. Yeah, a German Swiss. So this half breed guy, John Jones, married a white woman, Anna Marty Jones. You know, I give him homage, I say. I give homage. To my great grandfather John Harold Jones Jr. I knew him. I give homage to my great grandfather John Harold Jones Jr. I give homage to my great grandfather John Harold Jones Jr. You say it three times when you actually knew the person. He was very old, but I knew him. I give homage now on my mother's side to my Great great grandfather Doc Miller, I say. Amen. Amen. This is Hoodoo. I give homage of Mojuba to my great great grandmother Adeline Miller. Mojuba. I give homage. To my great great grandfather, Early Bird Terry, I give homage to my great great grandmother, Myrtle Terry. Now, they, these two lived on the Indian reservation, so I don't know if they were like, have been like, you know, slaves and in Indians who just followed them around. Later on, because they were had become part of the family, they were actually had some Indian in them. Because I read with very few African African Americans actually have Indian in them, but the Indians also have a gene that is hard to detect. So, and then a lot of that side of the family, they're like 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 little black Mexicans. So I guess it looks you know when they act, when they get drunk, somebody always gets killed. So I think they are Indians. Um. <laughs> I give homage to uh my grandfather. Oh no, he's he's for last because you see, I started out. With the oldest, but then when you get to the point where people uh, who are really influential in your life, they they come last. Then, like you know, you can start off, and this person could be in the hierarchy of oldest, but you only mention him towards the end because he he or she is uh is one of your most important ancestors. I give homage to my aunt Jimmy Lee. I say I give homage to my aunt Jimmy Lee. I say I give homage. Oh, here I'm supposed to the stick. See, you tap like this. I do. I give homage to my Aunt Jimmy Lee, I say. I give homage to my Aunt Jimmy Lee, I say. I give homage to my Uncle Lest, I say. I never knew his full name. I give homage to my Uncle Lest, I say. I give homage to my Uncle Lest, I say. I give homage to my Uncle Lest, I say. I give homage to my cousin Roy, I say. I give homage to my cousin Roy, I say. I give homage to my cousin Roy, I say. I give homage uh, to my cousin Otis Lee Woods, baby. I say. I give homage to my cousin Otis Lee Woods, baby. I say. I give homage to my cousin Otis Lee Woods, baby. I say. Um, so many of them dead. I give homage to my cousin. And I asked that a light. I lift and ascend his spirit and 
when he comes back for him to have a chance to ascend his spirit with good works for his spirit to ascend with good works because you know I'm a, this is for the people listening I'm doing this ceremony and I'm also talking to you because I think the ancestors want you to see this um, there's a place right above the earth earth uh, caught in the rays of the earth and the rays of the moon the rays of the earth and the rays of the moon constitute a world within itself a world that you have to be not of a physical like like our body physical substance to be in this is a world where which the theory double I see, like I told you the or what you want to call it the or whatever it's like the radiation that radiates everything radiates you radiate the radiation that radi radiates out from you that's really like your soul but that you know and when and when and when that goes at first you are seeing or most people are seeing to that point and they have to do good deeds on earth for a while to a sin I know this personally, I'll tell you the story. Well, not personally, but I, I know it because I'll tell you the story later. But that's where most of us are going to go. We're going to go. Don't believe when you die, you can't, you know, that's it. That's pretty, almost it, but there's a little wiggle room. I'll get to that later. Anyway, there's still a chance to a sin. I give homage to... Oh yeah, uh, to my ain't to uh, my ain't baby. Oh, I'm sorry, my ain't sweet. Lula London, I say. Ain't sweet, Lula London, I say. Ain't sweet, Lula London, I say. I give homage to my great great aunt Virginia Rivers Williams, I say. I give homage to my great great aunt Virginia Rivers Williams. Ain't Jenny. She was the hoodoo lady in my line. The hoodoo lady. I give homage to my great great aunt Virginia Rivers Williams. I say. Thank you, Ain't Jenny, for some of the stuff I learned when I was a little kid. You was doing that stuff. You didn't teach me nothing. It was taught me a little bit. You let me see some stuff, but you were just too damn old, you know, by then. But thank you for for being who you were, which was a drunken cuss, uh, drunken <laughs> drunkard, um, cuss bag. <laughs> but you were great and you were loving, and that's that counts more than anything. Uh, amen. Now I want to give homage to my grandfather. Two grandfather Leroy Griffin. I say I want to give homage to my step grandfather Leroy Griffin. I say that's homage to my step grandfather Leroy Griffin. I say the reason I didn't give homage to my real grandfather today is I forgot. But anyway, it's good not to today because I already gave homage to one killer who was my cousin Tyrone. And if I give homage to another one, then it might overwhelm the whole altar. So. I have to give homage to him. I never say both of their names in the same uh, praise, in the same in the same stream of praise, because that's a lot. <clears throat> one of them was a serial killer. The other one was a where's a, a rage serial killer. The other one was like you know, just mean, and and did some horrible things. So I'll, I'll talk to him later. Um, to get, to get an example of who he was, this guy Rufus Gray that killed uh, he uh, killed his wife or ex-wife or something like that. Shot his ex-wife and killed her daughter. Uh, he had he had previously he had just got off parole not long. Was it? Pro, he got out of jail not long before that for killing, uh, uh, not long before he did this killing, 
for killing a, a security guard or someone 25 years earlier. As a matter of fact, when I was working at the Justice Center, he had came through at that time. That guy happens to be my cousin. It's my mother's first cousin. He's named after my grandfather, whom I never know, named Rufus Gray. But from all I've been told, well, I'm not going to go into that. <clears throat> but that's why I won't put those two, um, my cousin Tyrone and Rufus Gray, my, my, my real actual blood grandfather, who I never knew. He died when he was like 26, something like that. He got shot up. Died in the 1950s. Uh, maybe he was older now. I don't know. Maybe 30 or something. But anyway, I don't put him and, and Tyrone in the same. Um, I'm glad I forgot. Because I would have done it. Because this is something that just. Well, no, not really. It's something I kind of always did. But I wasn't conscious of why I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, I was. But, you know. I don't never really put those two in the same. And other real rough. I did it with Roy, you heard, was a was a, a cousin of mine who was a bank robber. And I put Roy in it, but Roy had later on become a real good guy, because I knew Roy when I was a kid. My cousin. I forgot his last name. But, you know, I don't put, like, heavy hitters, like my grandfather and, and Tyrone into the same ceremony. It's too much power. It's too. It's too much. Those see spirits that died. Tyrone. I don't know. I think he died. I don't know how he died. But the other one died. He was shot up. My grandfather was shot up. Well, I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, I don't know the um, circumstances of Tyrone's death. I know that he had, that we were talking. And I was supposed to go see him. And I feel like I asked. I never did. But he visited me in a lucid dream anyway. Before I even knew he was dead. I think. So anyway, let me finish the ceremony. Um, where did I stop at? Okay. I give homage <coughs> to my Annie Mae Whale. Oh, the two Annie Mays. I give homage to my Aunt Annie Mae Wells. Uh, Annie Mae, so Annie Mae White. I say I, my Aunt Annie Mae White. My aunt, a great aunt, Annie Mae White, I say. Thank you, Annie Mae White, for looking over me. Even the psychic saw you were there looking over me. You loved me greatly for some reason. And I don't even know if we were actually kin, but we are now. I used to talk a lot of shit. We used to drive fast. I used to talk a lot of shit, you know. But you loved me. You didn't love anybody else. You was... You did, but I'm saying you never gave him the slack you gave me. You would give me anything. I don't know why. You was a tough, a tough bird. Real, real tough bird. You another one. They say kill people when you was young. But I don't know. I don't care. You was very ashamed of that. You try to be a good Christian woman in the end. I say. Eddie Mae White. She's one of my guardian spirits. A psychic saw that. Me and the psychic was, you know, the psychic um, told me I was psychic because I knew what what her uh, what her sign was and some other things about her. We were picking up on each other. We got caught in like a, I don't know what you call it, like a, a magnetized type. We were, mag our, our chi was melted together at that time. <laughs> And she told me who Annie, who Annie Mae White was. She said, hey, say, hey, you got a resume of Annie Mae? She wear glasses? Said, yeah. I knew I have two. And this is the one she was describing, Annie Mae White. Annie Mae White looking over me, looking for, looking uh, out for me. So, now here's my other Annie Mae, the church one. My, my actual blood, I think. My actual blood. I give homage to... My great aunt Annie Mae Wells, I say, a good Christian woman, I say. I give homage to Annie Mae Wells, a good Christian woman. Amen, that is. I give homage to Annie Mae Wells, a good Christian woman. Amen. Okay, now here come the heavy hitters. I give homage to my grandfather, 
Raymond Jones Sr., I say. Raymond Earl Jones Sr., I say. I give homage to my grandfather, Raymond Earl Jones Sr., Ray, I say. I give homage to my grandfather, Raymond Earl Jones Sr., Ray, I say. Last but not least, I give homage too. Wait a minute, before I do that, there's one more I want to bring in. This has nothing to do with hierarchy, but she was my mother in law. She ain't my, uh, you know. They say you gotta be a blood relative. I don't, you know what? I look at that kind of, yeah, yeah, mostly, but then the mother in law is really a blood relative. And I'm gonna say her, because she, she come to me in dreams and giving me numbers, okay? Her daughter is a straight up Christian Christian. She won't talk to her mother. But I'm gonna talk to her. And I'm gonna give homage to her. I give homage to Miss Mary Davis, I say. I give homage to Miss Mary Davis, I say. I can vomit to Miss Mary Davis, I say. You're welcome on my on my altar, Miss Davis. Your daughter won't talk to you because she's a Christian. She, I don't know, got some screwed up ideas. I told her you was just just trying, you know, just just hungering for her to talk to you. You had some things. You even came to her in dreams and told her some things that came true. But, you know, some people are crazy Christians. They're not regular, normal Christians. So, I'm just doing that. And there's something I should have did. I didn't do it, but I ain't really got to do it all the time because I've done it so much. Spirit of Cool Water. I just should have done this in the beginning, but I didn't. You know, Cool Water. What are they saying? Who do the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, or something like that. In Europe, it's a spirit of cool water, freshen the altars, especially in the SU, the Royer, freshen the road, I say, something like that. But I got my, I say, freshen my head. See right here, I'm putting it on my head. I say. And down my neck. Amen, I say, whatever. And last but not least, last but not least, My granny. Ella Mae Griffin. Mama, I say. Mojuba to Ella Mae Griffin. Mama, I say. Mojuba to Ella Mae Griffin. Mama, I say. We call her Mama. Mojuba to Ella Mae Griffin. Mama, I say. Also, I'm going to ask you ancestors. I got a friend. His name is Charles Workman. He's suffering with cancer. I ask that you remove that cancer from him. I say. He's in Metro Cleveland. I think the 10th floor. I ask that you help him with his cancer. You help him with this. I can't talk to his ancestors, but I ask that if that you help him, that, you know, Get, take, get this taken care of and that you help him survive this because that's a hell of a thing. And he's a good friend. Now, here's the offerings. The black eyed peas, that's all I had. And y'all got some more stuff coming too, you know that. I got that green candle burning because I always need money. See? Hold on. I'm going to smoke most of the cigar. All right. Here we go. See this cigar? Answers are off you this cigar. I say. Where'd it go? We're going to do this first. You like the cigar?
I still do a ritual today. But you know what? I ain't got some money to get all this shit I need to do. You know, I can I can hook some shit up right here. Where's my basil leaves? I can hook some shit up right here. Right downstairs. I might do that before I stop taping this thing. All for you cigar smoke ancestors. See look hard. See look hard. So I should have had this here. This representative of the ancestors right here. Ah. <coughs> See that? That's representative of the ancestors. For me, if you Scott Cyrus or something, another something else may be representative of your ancestors. I don't know. So here we go. You see all that? Huh? That's how I do mine. How you do yours, I don't know. That's how I do mine. My ancestors mostly were American from over here, African Americans, some of them Euro Americans, a few. And some of them maybe even Indian, I don't know. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. You see that? So I'm going to give him some of that. No, fuck. <coughs> All right. Let me see. I'm going to go do that ritual. What kind of ritual is I going to do it here? A lot of rituals I could do here. Shit, I don't know. Should I make me up a hoodoo bag? Nah, not today. I just want to give y'all a good little look at this stuff, you know? How I do my thing. This is not just to let the key green cattle burn. They know what it is. But yeah, boy, I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of this here and your water. Yeah, they likes that. They like that. I don't drink because if I drink, I'll be, you know. I was, I had a little problem with alcohol when I was a kid. Like about 17. Not really a problem. I never got addicted. Never really. But I just decided I was, I was that I wasn't going to drink anymore when I was like about 21. I, I drank sporadically anyway. I come from a long host of alcoholics. I mean... Way back to even the white guy I told y'all about, Moses Jones, he was an alcoholic. And all these people were alcoholics. I mean, terrible falling over alcoholics. And so I got, I got it on all ends. You know? Plus, I don't really like, I know they say, you know, I don't like what alcohol does to me. I don't like to have my mind altered. But here lately, I'm starting to like having my mind altered. I was young and a warrior and always looking over my behind my over my shoulder, this and that. I didn't like alcohol. 
I like that sometimes, like, you know, I get a bottle and get a woman and go up in the room or something and lay there and drink and do whatever else I was going to do with her. And, I, you know, that was it. But I never really got into alcohol. My father was an alcoholic, alcoholic. And he's a strong man to be able to quit that shit, you know, but he did. And he's a better man than I ever will be. I can't hold my father. I can't carry my father's tool kit. <laughs> I put it like that. And his father was a, was an alcoholic, terrible alcoholic. But that, that that's just the way it goes. You know what I'm saying, it's just the way it goes. So I really don't drink at all. I know these ancestors did. They have the every what I called like something. They drank. This is a basic ancestor, uh, uh, what I call it, it's a hoodoo, I call it a hoodoo, and a lot of hoodoo stuff get into like, you know, this is an ancestor, because to be honest with you, you don't have to call on nothing else but your ancestor, you don't need shit else, nothing, zero, not a zilch, all you need is your ancestors, and this is a basic hoodoo. Oh, so you don't need all this shit here and all that shit there. This, you need all you need to do is put one candle on one side of the altar, one candle on the other side of the altar. You got Jacques and Boaz. That's it. The two pillars of the temple in Jerusalem. Don't believe that else. Nobody tell you, because. Black people were mostly poor people. They didn't have all that, all this, uh, you know, money for all this extravagant bullshit that these marketeers are trying to sell you as hoodoo. Real hoodoo is a bit very basic. Real hoodoo mostly is based on intuition more than anything else. Let me give you an example. Say, um, let's just say, oh, I got a book out, by the way. It's an e-book. It's called New African Hoodoo. And, uh, I'm working on another book. I don't know. I'm working on two or three. I don't know which one I'm going to do. I'm working on some science fiction shit, and I'm working on some real, sh you know, hoodoo type stuff. But, uh, let me let you see me smoking my shit. But, I shaved my beard off. I have my woman shaved my beard off. I was a long gray ass beard. But anyway, uh, I still got all this stuff I got to shave off of the razor. But anyway, uh, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, oh, yeah. Real hoodoo. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, dude, I've done this. Okay, because sometimes, you know, I got high blood pressure, I got diabetes, I, I puff on cigars. My heart was hurting like hell, right? And I said some kind of Bible verse. It had heart in it, but it had nothing to do with, with heal my heart or nothing. But then the subconscious of the universe and the subcon my subconscious, it clicked and that damn thing, whoop, the pain went away. I have healed my heart with lucid dream dreaming. And doctors said, how the hell you do this? I told him lucid dreaming. I don't have a heart problem. I still got the high blood pressure and stuff. I can heal my diet. I got type 2 diabetes. I can heal that with eating a certain way. I never could heal the high blood pressure, no matter what I did. Never could. But that is what it is. Uh... Anyway, okay, I gave you that one example. There are no real, like this old psalm, there's, a, there's no set psalm. But except for maybe Psalm 90 and Psalm 24, or something, they do a walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and Psalm 91 and 90 or something like that. Those to me are the only two set psalms that you got, that, that, that just wipes everything. Oh, and Psalm 54 about clears me, something like that. Those are all it was that just wipes the fuck out of everything. You know, and those are things that you keep. My, my uh, great great aunt, I told you, was the Hulu lady. She used to keep a Bible turned to the song. Well, well, I forgot which. 
gate do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death on her on her altar? And I'm gonna stop saying, you know, well, you know, it is hoodoo. But if you if you tell any old black person you're doing hoodoo, that's doing hoodoo, you have a fight on your hands. They they say you're doing spiritual work or God's work. That's what they say. They don't they don't, they don't admit to the hoodoo thing. So. Uh, let me give you another for example. Like, uh, and this is what I found out was true. An actual uh, dietitian told me this, and I, I heard it's a hoodoo to heal to to make your kidneys better. Eat kidney beans. Look at the car, yo. Shit like that, a lot, you know, it's corresponding shit a lot of times that makes no sense at all, except for maybe it's shaped like a kidney, but it's red, looks like a kidney. You know, these things, uh, coupled with other things, a lot of times are corresponding, and they, you know, to, and those, that's what's used in hoodoo medicine a lot of times. A lot of times. But a lot of times it's based on observation, scientific observation of these people from over to Africa to here in America to, you know, they observe, you know, like like the, the spirit would give them a certain tug and it's in the gut. It's normally here in the gut. And the spirit would give them a certain tug and they walk over to a plant. They say, what is this? ain't got nothing to do. And the spirit will tug them and they'll pick it up and they'll take it and they'll use it. And the spirit will tell them exactly how much water to put, exactly how much of the plant to put, this the steep to plant the water for how long, put it where, whatever, and what else to add to it, and it'll work. There are certain things in hoodoo, certain certain plants and roots, that it's no work for this or that, as far as health or putting together a recipe. And not we don't say spell in traditional hoodoo, we say res recipe. Uh, in traditional hoodoo, I mean hoodoo from the slaves, from the plantations, they say recipe. Now, I'm not saying you can't add, you, you know, everybody can add and do what they will. Because I've added, I told you in the beginning what new African hoodoo is, where I've added uh, African American spirits that, that, that uh, lived and died, you know, for us or whatever. And I put them and added them to some I call New African Hoodoo. But there are certain methods that goes with old fashioned Hoodoo. And I don't know a lot of them. I just know some of from my dealings and reading the book, Katrina has his, Professor Katrina has his book. Um, it's a uh, Mojo Working, the Old Time Plantation Hoodoo, or something like that. Bojo, you you'll be okay if you look for uh, it's, it's Katrina Hazard, uh, Mojo working. You'll pretty you'll find what you're looking for. And she also got a book out called Juking, which has got a lot to do with dance, African American dance. The woman is, I mean, how it relates to hoodoo and it, the woman. This is one of the most brilliant women I've. Ever, I mean, it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. What? By the way, we both from Cleveland, Ohio. Both have ancestry that starts in Alabama, which is, I think is really weird. It must be something about Cleveland, the Cleveland Negro or something. I don't know. And then her husband was lieutenant to one of the people I've always admired and a spirit of New African hoodoo named Ahmed, I Fred Ahmed Evans. But I'm not going to get into that right now. But... And the Ahudu differed, it differed from um, region to region. But, you know, I say, hell, take all you can get from wherever you can get nowadays. I'm talking about traditional as much as you can. Like, they didn't light candles uh, in traditional Ahudu. This is something that was added in the early 1900s. But I say, hell, we can still, like, we can, like, you know, they use oil lamps. But that's only because they didn't have candles. So I bet a lot of Hulu people jumped on candles when they came, you know, when they became popular.
care of joy this because the